morning. I, I want to share with you uh, just not about the Philippines this morning. Not just about the Philippines this morning, but uh, some places around the world. And we just received a letter. We just received a letter here back a little while. And it was from the country of the Philippines. I mean, I'm from the country of Pakistan. And in the country of Pakistan, we have Gideons in Pakistan. And here uh, we received this letter. It says, I greet you from the persecuted church in Pakistan. I want to go ahead and advance this. I don't know if it's... The picture there you've seen was from a jail in Pakistan. And it said, the letter said, Dear sirs, please send me a copy of the holy book. But do not send it to my address here in prison. I am a Muslim. And the, the prison officials will not allow a Muslim to have a copy of the Bible. Please send it to a Hindu friend and enclose the address. He will get it to me. So what we have here is a partnership between a Christian and a Hindu to reach a Muslim for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it worked because the Holy Spirit was on it. You see, the Gideons received another letter. This letter from the man a few weeks later said, Dear sirs, thank you so much for the holy book. I am trying to read it, but it's very difficult because there are 12 of us in the cell. And we all want to read it. So we have divided the day into two-hour shifts, and each of us will read the book two hours a day. Well, the letter doesn't stop. We received another letter. Sometime later, the Gideons received yet another letter from this man who said, Dear sirs, thank you so much. So for this holy book. After reading the holy book, I have concluded that Jesus Christ is the only hope for a hopeless humanity, and I have received Him as my personal Savior. We have to realize that God's Word is so powerful that it works to cut the hearts of men to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Well, another thing that we had learned about Pakistan, in the year 2005, there was a great earthquake where 73,000 people had lost their lives. Well, people were lost. They lost all their belongings. Food would have to be brought into them to eat. And men were so concerned of what and why did this happen to my country. But we have Gideons in Pakistan, and the Pakistan's people that are Gideons there, we have a policy. As we have a catastrophe in a nation, we are allowed as Gideons International to pass out the word every kind of Bible that we have. It could be a hotel Bible, a school Bible, a prison Bible, a military Bible, anything we have in our inventory to bring it to the people that are, that are hurting. And as this man received a copy of God's word, he says, yes, I've heard about this Jesus. Tell me about this Jesus. And the Gideon was able to share Christ with him, and he received Christ as his personal Savior. Well, this man went back to his family and led his entire family to the Lord Jesus Christ. A Muslim man. Not only a Muslim man, he was a cleric or a spiritual leader for the Muslims. And so the rest of the people in his village said, you can no longer stay here. You need to go out of the village. So he set up a tent outside the village. And when he did that, he said it was, a, it was a death certificate for him because there were no, was no water. So what he did is he went in his tent and he started to ask God. So he dug a hole in the ground. And lo and behold, he struck water. And he was able to take care of his family. Well, as God would have it, the village ran out of water. Wow. And they came to him and they said, we hear you have water. And he says, I will share it with you if you let me share the living water with you. Amen. You see, one copy of God's Word, speaking of water, one copy of God's Word and led the entire village to Jesus Christ. This village is a known village in Pakistan for accepting Christ as their Savior because of this Bible and one man that received Him as His Savior. Well, I want to take you this morning to the scripture in Matthew 16, 15 that was uh, read to you earlier. And this is one of my life's verses because God is able to send me out as a Gideon for about 10 years to travel to about 25 different countries to do 
to share Christ with people in this area, but also to teach the Gideons how to work as a Gideon. And uh, this verse it says, uh, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. And we as Gideons are doing this on a regular basis, just as your pastor is. You see, every week as he prepares the messages for you, and just as his daughter did, sharing that we need him, we have him as a redeemer, and he is the answer for all of us. We as Christians, not just pastors and Gideons and missionaries, but we as the church also need to go out in our daily walk in our homes, to our children, our family, but also to our neighborhoods, to the places we work. We need to share Christ with everybody that comes along as we go out. But this morning I want to share with you that the Gideons International have chosen four countries to bombard with the Scripture, never like we've done before. And these four in, last, in the last five years has been done. The country of India, the country of Nigeria, the country of Brazil, and the country of the Philippines. And this has been done. But I want to share with you this morning about the country of India. And India soon will surpass China as the number one population in the world. You can see that in India right now there's 1,261,527 people that live in this country. This population total for the earth is 17.5% of the world's population. Most of us don't know this, but there are a population of 7 million people on the earth. And about one-sixth of them live in India. And we need to do this as the Gideons International. What we have done in, in all those four countries that I told you about, we broke up the countries in like states like we have here in the United States, California, Nevada, you know, Washington, Oregon, and all these states, they've appointed a president of the Gideons International to go out and do the work. And this has happened in the country of the Philippines as well as India. And in India, I want to share with you this morning that they need the Word. This is a nation where they need the Lord. And I just want to share with you that it is working. You see, on a regular basis, there's about a million copies of God's Word that are going out on a weekly, I mean, I'm sorry, on a monthly basis. So 12 million copies of God's Word are going into India, as well like the other state, the other countries as well, to reach people for Christ. And I know that it's working. You see, because God tells us in His Word, you know, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall stand forever. But you know, God has a sense of humor. As, you know, just after all these five years that we've been working so hard in these four different countries, I want to share with you that China has opened their doors to the Gideons International. Oh, wow. A country that has 1.3 million people that lives in it, it's 19.4% that soon will be overtaken by the country of India in the next few years. But in China, it's not the regular ministry that we have around the world. The government has allowed us to go into this country and do something different that we don't do in any other country. You see, most people know us by the hotel Bibles that we place in the Bibles in the hotels around the world. But most people don't know that we also go to public schools and private schools, colleges, junior highs and high schools. And we go to the military, and we go to the hospitals, and we go to the prisons, and we place God's Word. Those are the five areas that we place God's Word. Most people think, well, we just give our Bibles to everybody. No, we give them to those populated areas and those five strategic areas. But in the country of China, we're not able to do that. And the reason for it is because the government has allowed us legally to bring scriptures into the country. And so we are going only to the churches, something that we don't do. We don't bring Bibles into your church because you're supporting us to place the Bibles in the communities of, that you live in. Just here Friday, the Gideons International in our local camp, we call it a camp, we have three camps working together. 
the North Hollywood camp that's here. By the way, Dan Roush and his wife Terry are here with me. He's the president of the, of the camp. Their camp is joining with our camp, the Tahunga camp, and the, and the uh, Burbank camp to bombard the schools with scriptures. Yeah. And this last Friday, we were at San Fernando Middle School, placing the word around the school as the students exited out. We gave 750 copies to every student that came out the door so that they'd have their copy to take home. And you know, some families, this is the only Bible that they'll have as a family in their home. And we pray, we don't have time to witness to them because they come out so fast, but we pray that they'll take it home and read it along with their families to receive Christ as their Savior. You know, it's our prayer as Gideons International that we can fill every empty chair in every church. And it's many times that we're approached by people in the church and say, I'm here because of, I'm a product of your ministry. We praise God for that. But you see, in China, we're able to go into China. If I can get this to go, it's a little far. And it's a little different. You see, the Gideons International, when we go to these churches, they know in advance we're coming. And so they stand in the streets and they have like a parade for us to welcome us because they know they're getting a free Bible. And not like the Bibles that we give out in most countries. We only give out the New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. But in this country, we have printed the full Bible to give to these congregations. And you might have even seen on YouTube, there's a, a school that had received them from the church. And in the video, it shows that the people, the kids are just fighting for these testaments. And when they get them, they kiss them. And they, they say in Chinese, we just thank whoever sent this book to us because we know it's holy. Amen. But as you can see in this picture, we're welcomed into the church. And as we're welcomed, sometimes it's a difficult place to get to. There's, the streets aren't very good. You'll have to help me back there, this thing. Just go ahead and click to the next picture. But when we get into the church, different than all the other countries, we can go in sometimes and do a gospel message and invite people to receive Christ, but we're not allowed to do that. So we have Chinese Gideons that are doing this. And this man that you see here, he is sharing about what the Gideons are doing around the world, but he also gives a gospel call. And in every church that we've had, this last trip that they did, over 26,000 people gave their life to Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. As you can see in this next picture, there's no room in the church. Wow. Because the reason why, there may be empty chairs when we're not there, but the people of the community are hearing that we're giving a gift away. Little do they know, it's the holy book that we're giving away. And they come to fill the church. And as I said earlier in the next slide, that you can see 26,000 people have received Christ as a Christian. In the next slide, you can see that over 500 people at just one service received Christ in their Savior. In this next picture, you can see that a young lady ran from outside of the street to get to the front of the church so she could get her copy and then later gave her heart to Jesus Christ. Well, in this next slide is a very special verse to the Gideons International because we use this as a promise. A promise that God's promise will not return void, as it says. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and it shall succeed in the thing where I send it. You see, so the Gideons sometimes just go out and say, hey, would you like a free copy of God's word? Or, you know, like Dan does, he stands in front of them. He won't let them get away. And he says, you need this. He's one of our best presenters out there at the schools. We praise God for Dan. But, you know, this is the promise that we have. Because sometimes we're not able to be able to share Christ with people in schools because the kids are moving so fast. So, you know, a lot of kids say thank you and they say God bless you. And some are Christians and they come and say, we know why you're doing this. Young children, praise God, you've been doing a great job with some of those students that we reach, Pastor. You know, I've seen so many here this morning that uh, are here and sometimes they go to the schools and they, they say, hey, I'm a Christian. I go to a local church. Praise God. Well, I want to switch gears here and I want to tell you about the country of Colombia in this next slide. 
the Gideons International called me a few years ago to be the, the team leader for a blitz in Colombia. You know, and most of the time, most men are asked to go and they, they say, well, hey, check with your wife. You know, you know, make sure that she's good with you going. And I said, no, my wife knows that if we get asked to go soon to do something, we're going to serve the Lord. And he says, no, no, no. He says, please go. I said, okay, I'll call you back. I'll, I'll do what you said. And I, I said, I'm, I'm going. But unfortunately, this was a bad situation that turned to good. The original team leader that was going to go, something happened, and it turned out to be good for me because they asked me to go. And I was, I've been to Columbia prior to this, and I said, yes, I would love to go back there. And so you can see this team of 20-some men that flew in from all parts of the world to come and help Columbia in three cities to be able to share one million copies of God's Word in a matter of two weeks. Wow. This, for the Gideons, was a world record to break a million copies of God's Word. Well, the first thing in the next slide is that we go to, we arrive on Friday and Saturday, we get acquainted with the time, because usually it's a time change. And then on Sunday morning, we all have church services, just like we have here this morning. And we went to the pastor of this church in the next slide, in this slide right here, and I had no idea that they had a church this big, but they had 45,000 members in their church. Three services of 15,000 each. I was speaking at one of the church services, the first one. And as I went in, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, you know, when we come in as the Gideons, we ask for three things. And he says, what are those? And I said, well, first of all, we have a million scriptures to pass out in the next two weeks. We need your prayers. And he said, no problem. We will be praying and I'll promote that for you. I says, well, the second thing is that we're Christian businessmen and professional men. And we need more men to be able to have more hands to, pr to place God's word in Bogota, Cali, and Medellin. And he said, not a problem, not a problem. And he said, I said, there's a third thing, Pastor, you know, these books, they, these holy books cost money. And we'd like to ask for an offering if it's okay. And he says, brother, he said, I have to tell you something. He says, you know, 30, 35 years ago, there were no Christian Protestant churches in our area. And he says, we've seen the work of the Gideons International, and many had come to Christ because of the work when you came in. Wow. And they came in with their little Bibles to our church. So we made it a habit in our church to present a 500 U.S. dollars every month to the Gideons International. I said, praise God. I says, we don't need to take an offering today, Pastor. I says, you've already answered that question. And he says, go. He says, how much time do you need? I said, whatever you want to give me, Pastor, it's up to you. And he says, take 20 minutes and share with the congregation about what you're... And you can see that picture with my hand going up with one million copies of God's Word that we're going to go into Columbia in three cities. But you see, then a miracle happened in this next slide is we got ready to step down and the pastor stopped me. And he says, John, the Lord's put it in my heart and I changed my mind. We're going to take another offering for you today. And I don't know if you've ever seen this in a very large church, but all of a sudden an army came out from doors and they were holding these long sticks with bags on them, the offering bags. And all these ushers stood at the row, and the rows were very long, but the stick was so long that he just carried that bag all the way across the aisle. And the offering went in. And he says, Brother John, he says in this next picture, he says, please don't leave because you need to take this money with you. Well, you're seeing this money. It's not a very good picture, but if you look on the floor, there was a bag this long. And most of the money that came in, it was change. And he says, the reason I want you to take this with you is because it's very heavy. And he says, I want you to get your car, and I want you, it's very dangerous here, I want you to get your car, and there's a big door in the back of the church, right by where you were standing, drive your car inside the church. Said, okay. And we did, and then about ten men carrying this bag of money with all those, it was Bolivian money, it was Euros, all kinds of money. And he said... The guy that was with me, the national leader of Columbia, said, Brother John, I found out how much the offering is. I said, really, how much? He goes, it was a million pesos. Wow. I said, well, that doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> and he says, well, that's 5,000 U.S. dollars in one service. Praise God. So, 
In this next slide, you can see these three cities. I, I got to go to each one of these. But see, the Gideons that came from outside of the country were split up, and we each went to one of these cities to do the work. And I got to work in two of them, but I got to go ahead of time of everybody else because I was the team leader. And as we went to these cities, we prayed. We prayed that these one million copies would go out. But I said to the guys, I said, look, we're not here to count the Bibles. Really, that's not the important part. We're here to count the souls that come to know Christ. And being to a prior blitz, I went to Africa where we only placed 200,000 copies of God's Word. We had 53,000 people saved in one, in two week period. This next one, you can see we start out every morning on our knees, praying. You can see the local hat on the table, that's a Colombian hat. We were each given one of those, I, I have it somewhere at my house. but. Uh, we were able to go in this next slide to the police department and we were going to the trainees and asked if we went to our police department we'd be lucky to give them just the scripture which we don't really get to in the police departments we're really working at that but here we not only were given the copy of God's Word but we were sharing the gospel with the young recruits in the police department and my brother that was working with me in this next slide it started to rain well, the police officers that he was talking to went under covering so they didn't get wet. But the brother, he didn't care. He stood out in the rain. If you could see his back, it was soaking wet. But you know what he was doing? He was sharing the gospel with all these officers that were ready to go on duty. And then soon, if you go to the next slide, it said that they told us there's the captains of the police department. All the police departments are in one place, and you can go in and share the gospel with them. So as we went in there, they were very receptive too, and some of them prayed to receive, it, receive Christ as their Savior. Well, we had some interesting times in this next picture. You can see um, one of the Gideons that was standing in the rain, he, I was driving with him, and he had a car called a Toyota Land Cruiser. Here, that vehicle is worth probably seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. I don't know how he got this, but he had the back of this thing just like a truck filled with Bibles. And as we were driving along, uh, the police turned on their sirens and they pulled us over. It wasn't the guys, obviously, that we had talked to. But they pulled them over and they said, Sir, um, this vehicle was used by drug lords before. And we see these, we stop them every time. We need to know what you have in the back of the truck here. And he said, oh, no problem. He got out of the truck and he opened up and took out a couple and he gave to the officers. And he said, you see, we still have to ask you a question. Why are you in this neighborhood? This is where the drug lords live up on this mountain here. And he said, well, you know, we came to go to the schools and present every student with a copy of God's word. And in this next slide, he said, well, you cannot go alone. We're going to have to give you a police escort. And I'm a, praise God. Look at the police escort. And so here I am with my camera outside the window, taking the picture. The guy goes, no, don't do that. They'll slice your arm off. I said, okay. You know, so I, I actually Still got a couple of pictures. You can see one in the next picture there. That uh, We got one in front, one in back, one on the side of us. And they took us every school that day wow. to present God's Word. Well, when we went to the school in the next picture, you can see we just shared that there's only one way. One way to find peace with God. And that's to tell Him that you are a sinner and to receive Christ as your Savior. Yeah. And as we did in this next picture, you can see in every one of our testaments we have in the back page, the plan of salvation that you can go through John 3.16, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23. Revelations 3.20 and more, and then to pray in your heart to receive Christ as your personal Savior, and then sign your name and date it, and then invite them to a local church so that they could grow in the Word of God. And these young people, you can see this young lady signing her name, and then here they were praying. After they received Christ, they were praying to receive Christ as their personal Savior. And then all of them, after they received Christ, we'd ask them to take a picture in this next slide. And it, they would bring up their testaments, you know. God is open to people in this country. And as a result, many, many came to know the Lord. 
Well, one of my translators that was driving with me, he uh, actually came from the United States, so he, he, was, he was Colombian, but he was here in, in the United States illegally. And in this next picture, you can see a picture of him. And he told me, his brother John, he says, you know, when I went to the United States, he said, um, I came here with a load of drugs. And when I got off in Florida, they found me and they arrested me and they put me in prison. And I was in prison there for life. And he says, but you know, the United States couldn't afford to keep me, so they sent me back to my country. He says, but while I was in the prison, the Gideons came in and they gave a testament out. And I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. And I've dedicated my life to Him now. And He says, now I'm working in a local church. I have my own company of taxis that I, that I own. As a matter of fact, we were driving in one of them. But He had men out there loaning His taxis to the Gideons so they could go make distributions for the Gideons. And He says, brother, He said, he says, do you see that lady over there? And, I, and this, next, this lady that you can see here, I see, yeah, she was sweeping the streets. And He says, she needs Jesus in her heart. And I said, brother, I said, first of all, you told me two things. You told me, number one, that you were a businessman, that you had multiple people working for you. I said, number two, you told me you were in a local church here. I said, why, brother, are you not a Gideon? And he says, well, I didn't know they would accept me for my past. And I says, well, Jesus did. And the Gideons are going to accept you. And I said, brother, I just happen to have an application in my pocket. Would you sign this? And he said, I said, now let's open the trunk. And I said, brother, I am paying for 10 of these for you, free for your, for your first trial to go out and give God's word away. He went over to this lady and he led her to Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, I've been to colleges before in this next picture, and I've never been to a college like I was in Columbia. We well, see, as I was standing there, it's normally only the Gideons who come to the schools. But the auxiliary members, my wife and Jerry, they, they were there, not them, but all the auxiliary members. They came to the schools, and I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, this is weird. I go, why did the ladies come? And they says, you'll find out. And when I got to the college, there was a mountain of Bibles sitting there. A mountain. And the ladies instantly got out of the car and they went to work. They brought razor blades. They snapped open that box. They got the Bibles out. They're all in rows of ten. They snipped the papers off and they start stacking them high like a mountain of Bibles. And then when the students started coming out, they start handing us Bibles in our arms. And as fast as we could give out the Bibles, and as fast as the lady put them in our students kept coming. And it was just like we went on for like six hours constantly presenting God's Word to these students as they came out. And as I looked over, I seen this man, I said, ah, I need to take a break. <laughs> And I seen this man uh, reading the scripture. And I went over to him, and in Spanish, and I can speak a little Spanish. I says, uh, "Tiene problemas en tu vida?" And he says, "Yes." Some of you speak Spanish. I don't speak very good, so forgive me. But then I went on to tell me. He told me that he had been in church for many, many uh, years, but he left. And he was just, he couldn't put this Bible down as he was reading it. He says, I've made a big mistake. I need to get back to church. I said, brother. I said, do you have a family? He says, not only do I have a family, I'm a grandfather. And he says, I have a, my wife is a grandmother and my, my children, and they have children. And he, I said, do you know that the Bible talks about that you're the head of the family? And that you are responsible to bring them to the Lord and bring them to church? It's your responsibility. He said, you know, I'm a professor here at this school. I'm a professor. And he says, I'm not going to school today. I'm taking a day off. He says, because i got to get home. Because i got to tell them that I'm rededicating my life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Instantly. These are miracles. We talked about in the song today that they're miracles. You know, God is still working His miracles outside in these countries. You know, and when I went into the school, in this next picture, there was, uh, you ever heard of bullying? Well, that's big here, but in this school... This young boy was the only one that raised his hand to receive Christ, and he got harassed. He had tears running down his face, but he had the courage to raise his hand amongst the whole classroom, only one student. Now, I don't really know what his problem was other than they were picking on him, but I know that his tears were tears of joy because he received Christ in that day. And as I went up to him, I, to the back of the room, and I gave him his copy of God's Word, I shook his hand. And I said, I'll be praying for you. 
And we need to pray for this little boy. I don't know what his problem was, but I felt his pain. And I know that this book has all the answers for him. Praise God. Well, in this next picture, it tells you the results. You see, one, almost 1.3 million copies of God's Word went out. It broke the record. But I'm happy I'm here today. You know why? Because the record was broken. The record that we had in Colombia. And guess where it was broken? Come on now. Amen. The Philippines has broke the record with almost 1.5 million copies done in a matter of two weeks. Praise God. But you hear, you know, I told you that we were praying for this country for 100,000 new souls to be in heaven on this week. In this next picture, we only got 20,000. Praise God, even 20,000. But you know, I told the local Gideons, I said, and the, and the Gideons that work from outside the country, I said, you know, I'm disappointed that we didn't get that. And they go, why, John? Why are you disappointed? The Bibles are staying. We're leaving. God's Word will still work. In Isaiah 55, 11, it says that it's His promise. And we know God's Word is working still in Columbia. In this next slide, Matthew 9, 36. I'm here to encourage you not to be a Gideon. Not to be a pastor, but to be an evangelistic person that's going to go out. You see, the reason why is this verse is written for all of us. And it says in Matthew 9.36, But when he saw the multitude, that he should be capitalized, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were distressed, scattered as sheep not having a shepherd. You see, brothers and sisters... It's all of our jobs to go out into the community to share Christ. Be bold for Jesus. I know you have next door neighbors. I know you have family that maybe isn't accepted the Lord. I know you go to work and there are people there every day that need Jesus. We need to do this together. And I, I want to share with you, uh, just in closing here, uh, a way to do this. And there might be even somebody here today that would say, you know, I really haven't accepted Christ in my heart. And I want to do that today. But if you haven't and you've accepted Christ, then you can use this to do with your friends that need Christ in your heart. First of all, in our little testaments that we have, it says in just the first few pages, in Spanish it says, La Biblia contiene la mente de Dios. In English it says, The Bible contains the mind of God. Okay. Now, when you talk to people, you could tell them, books of the world are written by who? People. Hey, that's right. People. But this book, right in the front of it, says, the Bible contains the mind of God. No other book can claim that. And you know, we as people have problems in our life every day. As young people, maybe not so much, but as we get older, we get health problems, we got money problems, we got all kinds of problems. But in our little testament, it has helps. And it says very clearly, this week I was able to share with one of uh, a, a salesperson that came in my office, because she said that my dad was addicted to alcohol. And the second item here is addicted. On page 182 in John 8, 34 through 36, it tells you what God would tell that person. In James 1, 13 through 15, page 412, it says that. In Proverbs 14.12, it says, page 609, it tells you all about addiction. And there's many, many other problems that we face, discouragement, all kinds of different things. It has the page number for us, so we can do that. You know, so you can, you can tell people that the answers are all in the book. But you know, a lot of people, when they read the book, they don't understand it. And there's a reason for that, and I'd like you to write this down if you could. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, it says there in those two verses that the God of this world has veiled those who are perishing. And then it goes on to say that you know God has the God of this world has blinded those from not accepting Christ, the true glory of the gospel. You see, and that's what you can tell people and say, you know, if you read this. You, you to ask the people, well, you got a problem. Have you read it? Yeah, I don't understand. Well, here's the reason why that you don't understand. Because Satan of this world 
that doesn't want you to receive Christ. But there is a solution. There is a solution. And the Gideons have it when we have these testaments. But you can write these verses down and put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, and memorize them. John 3, 16, verse 1. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. You see, this sales lady that came in, she told me, I'm Jewish. And I says, well, so what? I says, God loved the Jewish people. He came for them. This, You were the first. I said, but not only that, Jesus was Jewish. Second, that was John 3, 16. Second, Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You see, that's what we need to tell people. That there's no person that falls, you know, we're all, we all fall short of the God. Uh, and the lady said to me, she said, you mean you sin? I said, absolutely, I still have a problem. I sin. But you see, there's an answer to that. And that is found in uh, Romans 6.23 where it says, For the, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, I have Jesus that has come live with me. And He gives me the Holy Spirit who tells me, John, you shouldn't talk that way to people. You know, the Holy Spirit whispers in my ear. You've seen those commercials, the angel sitting on one side and the devil on the other, right? We need to listen to Jesus. And then last of all, in Romans 3.23, Romans 3.20, I love this. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with them. You see, you can tell those people that the door of our heart is the place that Jesus wants to come in. But we have the key, or us individually, to unlock that door and open the door and invite Christ to come in. And once we've done that, God will be with us. And He'll send us the Holy Spirit. He will talk to us and let us know. But it is so important that you invite people to come to your church. You need to come fill these empty chairs. If I come back next year, please talk to people so that all these chairs are full. You know, it's our duty as Christians to do that. You know, I'm going to give this invitation. If there's no, someone here that has heard this for the very first time and would like to accept Christ as their Savior, I would like you just to raise your hand today and say, you know, I haven't done this, but I want to receive Christ in my heart today. I want to open the door of my heart and invite Him to come in. So if there's anyone that wants to do that today, I'm sure Pastor would pray with you. I will pray with you. I will even give you a testament today to take with you so you have a copy of God's Word. If there's no one, then I'm leaving it all on your shoulders. Church, the Celebration Church right here in Coldwater, in North Hollywood. And we need to go out and share the Gospel yeah, with man. people. Now in closing, I just want to share the same three questions. Pray for us as we go out. We have many men that are traveling outside the United States and around the world in dangerous countries. We have a guy right now in Nepal. You've heard about the earthquakes there. He's okay. But he's there to do the same thing that I was doing in these countries. If you're a Christian businessman or professional man, I ask you to come see me or see Dan. This is his camp area. If he doesn't want you, I'll take you. <laughs> and third of all, we have a thing called Friends of Gideons, and if you're interested in being a part of a friend, if you can't be a Gideon, if you're not a Christian businessman or professional, and you want to be a friend, come see me after the service. I can share with you how to do that. But the other thing is if, if you're a Christian businessman or professional man, and your wife can join with you, come with us and place the Holy Word of God. And I want to thank especially your pastor. Thank you for his daughter and wife. We're inviting us on a regular basis to share God's Word with you. And we love you, and God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen.